On this video, I want to talk about recording gear bags. So I've got one in particular here and I want to talk about the alternatives as well. What should you put your recording kit in? We'll find out here. So I recently took a trip to the northeast of the US, went on a bit of a road trip and did a lot of recording on the way. And I wanted to find a way to take all that gear with me. So I did a bit of research into gear bags. Now, you don't tend to get so much uh, recording gear bags, like audio bags, but what you do get is camera bags. And it turns out the camera bags are very repurposable into recording gear. You've got a lot of this stuff is very similar in terms of size, in terms of weight, configuration, all that kind of stuff. So it worked quite well. So this one is what I ended up with. This is the Low Pro Format 140. So the Low Pro Format 140 is a great little bag. Um, and I'll take you through some of the other models from Low Pro as well, because there's a few different ranges that they have. They've got the Low Pro Format series, they've got the Low Pro Adventura series, and they've got the Low Pro Nova series, and um, one or two others as well. But those are the three I'm going to go into in this video, tell you which ones might suit, the pros and cons, all that kind of stuff, which ones might fit your budget. But just to show you the format to start with, the format is the lowest priced of the range actually. So this was only about 25 pounds, about $30, but it's still great. So dividers inside to start with. Uh, camera bags often tend to come with dividers so that you can organize your lenses, all that kind of stuff. And this works great for dividing up like a recorder in the middle, a couple of mics, on this side, stopping them all bashing into each other too much, maybe a uh, cable in there too. I actually ended up carrying the cables though on the side pockets. So you've got side pockets right here where you can put cables quite nice and neatly, just like that. And they go right in, they stick out just a touch, but I found they didn't fall out, they didn't get bashed, they were absolutely fine in there for the whole trip while I was away, so they were perfect. You've got a couple of other things too. You've got a pocket on the top for smaller things. So I don't know if I actually used that much, but it's got a couple of little sections in it. So you could put SD cards in there, that kind of stuff. Maybe batteries. You've got a little uh, clip for putting your keys on or something like that. Anything really important you don't want to fall out, but good thing there. And you've got a zip pocket on the inside as well. So another place for, I've got my batteries in there, for example, for the recorder. So lots of batteries, spare, could put SD cards in there too. And finally, you've got a flat pocket on the back. So it can't carry a whole lot in there. It has to be something very thin, but maybe if you've got like a, a little notebook for your recording sequence, that kind of stuff, you could fit that in there, no worries. Uh, and obviously you've got the strap, pretty basic strap with the format series, no padding or anything like that, just a, a a standard kind of strap but it's totally comfy I mean the size of this thing it's not big you're not going to fit a shed load of stuff in it and with an H6 two SM58s a couple of laves some extra batteries two cables uh, it was fine it doesn't weigh that much and it was fine with this strap and that setup now this one is uh, supposed to be relatively robust it's not waterproof exactly but I think they call it splash proof maybe, but I wouldn't trust this to keep it out of the rain. So don't take things out in the rain uh, and expect them to stay dry inside. But that's the Format 140. But if you do want to get things wet, I'll tell you about the other ones in a minute because that's one of the advantages of the next range up. Just to finish up on the format though, you do get a few different ones. You get the Format 100. I think you get a 120, a 140, a 160 and a 180. And those seem to correspond just to the width essentially um, because they're all very similar height, similar depth, but they just get wider. You've got a narrow one that you can fit a little camera in, maybe just, that would only go like one recorder or a couple of mics, not much extra space. But the 180 is a fair bit more bulky, uh, but you can fit a bunch of stuff in that one. If you've got some bigger mics, some extra gear, the 180 might be the one for you. But I found this a great balance. The 140 is big enough to get a lot of stuff in, but not going to get too much in the way. Really easy to carry around with the handle on the top. Looking at the next range though, so that's the format range. They're the lowest end, so 25 to 30 pounds, 25 to 30 dollars to buy the 140, a bit less or a bit more for the smaller and bigger ones. The next one up was the Adventurer range. So the Adventurer range has a couple of extra features. Uh, the main difference is it has a rubber base. So the Adventurer 
has a, a Ventura, sorry. It's got a rubber base on it, which is a bit more sturdy, so it helps it set up more easily. Uh, it's a bit more shockproof, so if you're putting things down and you drop it just a bit hard, the rubber base can take a bit of that impact. And it's also waterproof, so you can put it down on a wet surface and it won't soak up into the bag. Like this one, you wouldn't want to put down on anything wet. Like if it's if it's raining, you couldn't really put this down on the ground because it would just soak it up into the material, into the sponge in the bottom here. So that's that's a big part of the um, of the difference. The Adventurer also has a, instead of closing up like this and zipping up, the Adventurer has more of a, a flap that comes down over the front, and that flap is meant to be waterproof as well, or not waterproof at least, but weatherproof. You know, it'll keep the rain off um, much more effectively than certainly this one does, and that goes right down over the top. I believe as well the Adventurer had an extra pocket on the front. Um, to put maybe a few extras in, a little thing there that that flap covers over. So if you want to put in things like your wallet or you know a few extra flatter bits, like your phone, whatever it might be, that can go in the front as well. Now, the, um, the Nova range is the next one. So the Nova range is a fair upgrade. The, the, the Adventure range goes up to maybe 40 to 45 pounds, 40, 45 dollars in terms of price. So it's kind of doubling almost from the format and then the nova range is the more high-end ones and they are up to maybe 60 65 70 pounds and dollars okay but the advantage you get with the nova is that there's much more pockets there's pockets in the back on the front on the sides um and the big thing is it's much more weatherproof so there's more storage space to start with with the nova but the big advantage is it's weatherproof. You get this little waterproof jacket that comes out of a little pocket and covers the whole thing. And it acts like a waterproof jacket for the whole bag. So it just keeps your camera safe, your recorder safe, your microphone safe, whatever you're putting in this bag. And that's the Nova range. So that's the Low Pro Nova 100 to 180 as well. Similar sizes to them. But I just love these bags. The Low Pro, I'm not getting told, told uh, asked to say that by Low Pro. I just found their bags... Um, and I think they've got a great range, pretty good value as well, good quality. I found no troubles with this one whatsoever. So by all means, if you're interested in getting one, you'll find the links in the description below or within the blog post, depending on whether you're uh, watching this on the website or on YouTube. And uh, if you do use them, I'd appreciate it. They are our affiliate links help support the content on this channel and on our main site, the podcast host. Com. If you're interested in more gear, equipment reviews, more news around podcasting, please do pop over to thepodcasthost.com and if you go forward slash equipment, you'll see our full range of gear, equipment reviews and guides and all that kind of stuff. So if you're into mics, mixers, all that kind of stuff, then you can browse away there to your heart's content and find everything you ever wanted around podcasting. And if you want that extra help, of course, you can always find us at thepodcasthost.com forward slash academy. And that's where you'll find all our courses, which take you in depth on how to run, how to monetize, how to, uh, you know, launch your podcast in the best way possible. That's with me, Matthew, and the rest of the team. All right. Thank you very much for watching this video. Hit the subscribe button. You'll get the future ones at any point when they come out. Thank you again, and I'll see you on the next one.